Welcome back, everyone. Um, for our next talk, uh, we've got TJ, who's a kernel hacker who has been working on various subsystems of the kernel for the past two decades. Um, and in the past few years, he's been focused on developing C Group 2 resource control mechanisms, which is what he's going to be talking about. Please welcome TJ. Hello. Hey, um, I'm TJ. I, I work at uh, Facebook Kernel Team. And um, um, yeah, I've been working on resource control a lot. So today's presentation is about uh, C Group 2 resource control um, using something called resource control demo. So. Um, so what is resource control? So uh, this is the um, uh, uh, one phrase which which kind of captures the mission statement um, of our team, and it's world conserving full OS resource isolation. Resource isolation um, part is relatively intuitive, right? I mean, you have multiple competing um, users of the resources on the system, and you wanna you know, distribute them in a controlled manner. But you know the first two parts, um, let's unpack them a little bit. So world conserving means that um, we don't want to waste uh, resources, CPU, memory, and I/O, just to be able to control them, right? Um, so we want to be able to control them, and we don't want to lose the total amount of work that the system can do as much as possible. So that part is work conserving. Full OS means that we want to be transparent. Uh, in other words, we don't want applications to to have to do you know things that you know it, it usually doesn't do, um, like you know using only direct IOs. Or you know not not being able to use depend on buffer dials or or swap or anything like that. So we want applications to do exactly the same thing that they've been doing, and we just want to uh, layer right or enforce resource control on top in a transparent transparent manner. So this is a, a slide um, or rather a screen that that I've been using in in talks for the past couple of years, and it's from a. Um, uh, the first deployment of um, wide scale deployment of um, resource control uh, uh, at Facebook, and um, there's there's you know a lot going on in the graph, but like uh, for for this purpose, we only need to pay attention to the purple and the green line, um, you know, which is going up and you know staying top, staying close to the top, and in the middle the purple line drops. So this line, both lines uh, represent RPS request per second. And and these are from live web server uh, serving Facebook traffic, with you know live traffic, um, and um, and and when is you know the the when the IPS line is close to the top, uh, is the machine is fairly saturated. So these are two separate machines uh, doing similar things, uh, serving live traffic at 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 almost uh, completely saturated uh, you know capacity, and um, in the middle, uh, what happens is that. Um, in a part of the system, in a management part of the system, right? Um, like where things like Chrome and Chef and other management um, operations happen, a memory leak happens, and and the memory leak is you know something we introduced intentionally for testing, but memory leak happens, and on purple, right? The memory leak kind of eats up the system. Eventually, the web server uh, uh, you know doesn't get enough resources, um, and it it you know just the RPS just drops. And it just cannot serve traffic in an effective way. And if you look at the timeline, um, um, it comes back after like 40 minutes, right? This is not good. Um, if you imagine, right, I mean, this happening across, I don't know, a lot of machines uh, around the same time, let's say, you know, this is a, a, a bug um, which could be triggered at certain timing in, in, in at future date. Um, there are those types of bugs. And if that happens across, you know, large part of the fleet, then we'll have site outage, so that's not good. Um, and the green line uh, is the one with resource protection enabled, resource control uh, enabled, and and it's happening the same memory leak is happening uh, actually three times, not just one time, three times on, on that machine. And you can see that while IPS fluctuates a little bit, it generally stays up, and and you know we can weather that. Um, so um, that's that's you know that's what uh, uh, protection uh, does how when resource control protection works that's how it works but you know this is really live traffic right and and it's kind of cumbersome and awkward to set it up uh, the test and and verify it especially in automated way um, and we you know we don't always want to uh, experimenting a lot with live traffic that much and 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 it's also you know difficult to 
move it anywhere, right? I mean, you have to be in prod environment um, and it's just difficult to, to use. Um, so that's where uh, resource control demo comes in. Um, and, and this is the a screen capture of resource control demo running. And um, what it does is that it's obviously a, 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 a terminal program, but uh, behind it, there are multiple components. And what it tries to do is that trying to capture like a situation or a condition uh, like as as in before, right? In the, in the previous slide, a prod environment, like in a single uh, suite of applications. Um, so there's a lot going on there, but uh, uh, but we will go through them. And so what are the components of the resource control demo? Um, so the first one is called RD hashd. Uh, this uh, approximates something like a web server, right? Um, it's a latency sensitive request serving application. Um, so it can modulate um, its load, its target RPS uh, to the set level, but it's also bound by um, latency target. So if you say, you know, run at, I don't know, 600 RPS per second, then, then it will, you know, load up to that load level as long as its latency, the response latency for its requests, requests stay within certain level. Um, is uh, currently set at 100 milliseconds. So you can see that, you know, uh, this kind of is similar to how a uh, load balanced uh, web server would behave. And and there are uh, things called uh, sysloads and sideloads. These are basically um, um, just the name used for secondary workloads running on the system, whether there's, you know, management workloads, like, you know, updating RPMs, um, you know, the chef, uh, is a, which is a management thing that that uh, a lot of people use, um, all those things, right? The monitoring, you know, security, whatnot, or you know, it can be something else entirely, you know, an opportunistic workload which tries to use um, capacity which is not being used at the moment. So um, those are so those are the workloads that that resource control demo uses, and there's something called RD agent, um, and the agent is just that uh, it, it configures the entire system monitors that um, all the configurations are are right, uh, are, are set up correctly. There are a lot of requirements and we will go through them. Um, and and, and it, it just manages the entire, um, all the experiments, which is run run on the system. And resource control demo is the, the application which presents the whole thing in that, in that, um, in that terminal um, application. And um, here's a, a Thing so one one focus the resource control demo the, the the demo app has is that on documentation. So because um, in the process of developing uh, uh, resource control and applying them uh, in in Facebook Fleet, we just encountered a lot of surprises. We had to develop a lot of things, and um, it was just uh, there are a fairly uh, unintuitive interactions between components and 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 resources. So. Um, to 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 configure and, and to successfully uh, uh, implement comprehensive resource control, you just have to you know meet a lot of requirements yeah? in terms of you know what file system you use, what uh, controller you use, how they are configured, and all those things. Um, so, for example, one thing that a resource control uh, RD agent does is um, configuring the whole system uh, for comprehensive resource control, and then reporting anything uh, which is missing. And, and this is resource control demo, the, the uh, TY, uh, the, the interface application, reporting you know, all the uh, requirements which are met. Here, all the, uh, here's the part of the list. Um, and if any requirement is missing, it'll be highlighted in red and you can read it and then you know, resolve it. So, um, so with that, um, we, let's look at you know, what resource control demo can, can show um, in, in practice, right? I mean, so let's first look at the protection um, scenario. So this is basically going to be a similar scenario, the same scenario um, as that as the the first graph where we were uh, demonstrating protection with live traffic in in prod environment, and then we're going to show the same thing using a resource control demo. And um, so the, this is the scenario. So web server is running at uh, full capacity. And um, oh, I lost my terminal. Okay. Um, and the 
something in management section, which is running in system D speak, system dot slice, right? The workload is running in workload dot slice in separate C groups. And the system portion, the management part is running in system dot slice. And then it has a new bug leaking memory. It's the same scenario as before. And the question is whether we can survive um, if this happens across a lot of machines. So we're just going to be looking at one machine, but you know, that's what's at stake. You know, are we going to be losing a lot of machines over this? And um, let me uh, restore the terminal because I lost it for some reason. All right. Give me five seconds. All right. Okay. So this is screenshot, but um, let's um, let's go to uh, live um, live demo. All right, so um, this is a, a live, live demo. Um, so here, research console demo is uh, running on a desktop sitting right next to me right now. And we are going to navigate to, don't worry about you know reading the text. Um, it's fine. You don't need to. Um, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be explaining what I'm doing. And, and later there's going to be a screen captures and, and I'm going to explain, you know, uh, how, how it all works out. So I, I navigated to a page which is called C group and resource protection. And then it, it basically explains, you know, what, what I've been saying, right? I mean, what the scenario is, you know, what's at stake and all those things. Um, and here, if you look at the uh, left section, like there's, there, there's graph, right? There's a blue line and there's green line. So green line, which is going up is the RPS and the blue line is latency. Um, and right now it, it's just ramping up and it just reached hundred percent load level. So green line is now at the max. That's the best the machine can do. And um, latency is, hasn't um, stabilized yet, but you know, it's gonna stabilize around you know, 90, 100 milliseconds. Okay, um, normally I would wait a little bit more to, 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 for the workload to stabilize, but here, um, let's just go ahead. Um, so what I'm gonna do is that like here, like the button says, disable all resource control features and start memory hawk. So I'm gonna, turn off all the resource control features or the, you know, C group features and then UMD and then start the memory hook as, you know, as before in, in that production experiment. Um, so on, on the left lower side, there are these logs going on and it's showing um, that that memory hook started and is, is consuming memory in you know, a certain rate. And if we wait just like five to 10 seconds there, we now already start seeing RPS dropping, right? And latency is spiking and RPS is dropping. And it's basically the same thing as um, we, we saw with the production workload. And if we go to the graph view, um, we can see, so this is showing um, the, the same RPS graph and, and the, uh, the top left is the same RPS graph and, and the other three are pressure graphs. So, so it's something called PSI is another uh, important uh, component uh, for resource resource control, and it measures uh, which resource is uh, being contended for and which resource is slowing down um, operation by how much. And and if you look at the right side, um, the two graphs are uh, kind of moving in sync in green, and it's showing that uh, the green is the workload, so the main workload is is experiencing fairly high level of um, uh, memory and IO contention, and that's why you know we lost all the RPS. And then you can navigate to um, other parts of the graph, and I'm gonna go through over them. But yeah, that's how basically it works. But here, um, what you can see is that um, you know we completely lost the server. Right? I mean, if it had been our web server, it's not serving any traffic anymore, and the whole the machine the whole machine is occupied by running this um, this memory hawk, which is not what you want. Um, so let's go back to our slides. All right. So now this is a screen capture. So I just wanna, you know, because that happens in in like you know a minute time frame. I just wanna um, break it down a little bit. So this is a screen capture from um, previous session. Um, 
And then here is just ramping up, right? I just did the, the uh, web server or RDHD, web server um, approximation, and, and RPSO is going up and, and eventually the, the uh, latency stabilizes. And on the next slide, now, you know, this is what we just did, right? I mean, we disabled all resource control and started a memory leak. And then we saw the RPS dropping. And if we, if we, uh, if you, if we take a, a closer look at it, um, there are fairly um, several interesting um, aspects to it. So this is the graph view, and it's you know about the same graph at, as before, um, as all these instances are you know fairly similar. Um, so so memory and I/O, the green part, the the two right, the the two graphs on the right side, the greens are going up, right? That's not good. That means that. Um, our main workload is experiencing memory and I/O pressure. One thing which is interesting is that they are uh, moving about the same, right? This means that um, that um, that there's a memory pressure, like there's memory contention, and memory contention is causing um, a lot of I/Os. And what we are basically ending up stalling for uh, is the I/Os, right? So we are waiting for I/Os, and that's why we cannot make progress. So that's why I/O pressure is reported. And because all the memory operations are waiting for I/O, also memory um, pressure move in, in tandem with I/O pressure. This is not always the case, but you know, in, in scenarios like this, um, you know, this is the case. Um, so if if we look at the next part, the utilization graph, um, top right, there's the memory utilization. So if you look at the green line, green is you know falling down, right? And and at the bottom, purple line is going up. Um, so purple line is the the, uh, the management part of the system. So, um, so what's happening is that um, as the purple line, um, the management part leaks memory, it takes up more and more and more memory, and that's eating into memory, you know, which you know should be going to to the the for the main workload. So you know it's eating up, and that's what's happening. And if you look at the top left part, that's swap utilization, right? So um, as the, oops, my, I, I think I'm not going to wear on the right side. It keeps falling down. Um, so the uh, on the left side, um, the uh, purple line is going up and green line is going. It just means that you know both are experiencing memory a lot of memory contention, and and you know so and they're ending up swapping out their memory to 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 swap right, and um, and you know and it cannot really run because it's you know so short on memory. So CPU utilization drops on the top left, and and if you look at the next part, the I/O graphs, this um, you can see. Uh, so the previous graph, right? I mean the um, the memory utilization. So this is happening because uh, memory is not protected uh, on the workload, right? So we don't want the memory leak to be able to eat into main workload's memory, but that's happening. So memory protection is not there. That's why that's failing. And if you look at this, what's going on is that, so top left is read BPS, top right is write BPS. And the green line uh, is our main workload, purple line is you know our offender. And uh, if you look at the right part, right, um, what's happening is as the uh, memory gets tighter and tighter, right, there are, there are supposed more reads because you, know, you need to 14 more memory. Um, B14 more memory, and there's also more writes because you are swapping out. And and what's happening is that um, these reads and writes, um, the writes are adding up to you know 300 megabps uh, 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 sustained, which is about maximum this de device can do. Um, so this is completely saturating the device. Um, and if you look at the bottom two graphs, there's the read and write latencies, and and they are rising to to a tens of uh, milliseconds. So both P, P90, P, also P50, so the median median uh, uh, read completion latency, 90th percentile, 99th percentile, they're all going up to you know, tens of milliseconds. And if you remember that you know, the, the latency requirement, latency target is around 100 milliseconds, right? We, we want to be able to answer um, you know, at least under 100 milliseconds. Um, and if you are missing multiple pages because of memory pressure, you have to uh, issue multiple IOs completing a single request. And if single request takes you know, uh, you know, 50 milliseconds, 
you, you don't have a chance to meet that uh, latency target. So that's why you know, the whole thing is failing now. So the so lack of memory protection is causing um, the main workload to generate a lot of IOs, and lack of IO protection is causing the IO latencies to spike altogether. And, and combined, you know, the workload just doesn't have a chance. Now, um, let's try the same scenario with all the protections turned on. So here, the protections are uh, CPU weight, which is proportional um, CPU controller, memory that low. Uh, it's not quite proportional, but it behaves like a proportional uh, in a way. Uh, it's, it's basically prioritized memory allocation for the main workload. Um, and IO weight, which is proportional IO controller. And the IO weight is uh, implemented by something called IO cost controller. Um, and and those are the C group controllers um, prioritizing, which would be prioritizing the main workload over the system management part. And there's also something called UMD. And, and what UMD does is um, kind of, it's like an early warning system. So before a system gets into real trouble, it intervenes and, and, and you know, kills whatever is really misbehaving. Um, so I'm going to switch back to the live um, terminal. Okay, we're back. So, uh, because we left it alone, um, the workload eventually, um, oops, eventually, um, eventually recovered, right? Um, so, so workload is running at full tilt, uh, at a maximum load, and latency is, you know, about 100 milliseconds, slightly below that. Um, so everything is looking good. And, and, now um, all the resource controls uh, are are in, re enabled back. Uh, that's uh, indicated on the top left part. Um, when you actually try it, uh, you'll be able to see. But you know, it, it indicating that it's indicating that all resource controls are enabled. Um, is enabled. Um, and now I'm gonna start the same memory hog or memory bomb or memory leak that I used before as before. Um, so this is exactly the same thing. The only difference is that the you know resource protection is turned on. And um, if you if you remember our last try without protection, after about 15, 20 seconds, our RPS was at zero. Um, and we are already at 15 seconds, um, now about 20 seconds. And you can see that um, there's really not much change, right? I mean, so there's a small dip. So they are like really small dips, but nothing really, you know, nothing drastic happens. and. If you check out the graphs and they look really different too, we are going to go over them. Um, so the pressure graphs look really different. Uh, the utilization graph looks really different too. And uh, so does IO graphs. Um, and um, one thing is that like the system um, left in this state, the system gets sustained this um, uh, you know, indefinitely, it doesn't. It doesn't care, right? I mean, no matter how many times you try it, there's, you know, the workload is the main workload is gonna be fine, um, and you know, eventually UMD is gonna kick in and 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 resolve the situation. So let's go back to the slide and and see what actually happened. What's actually happening? All right. So yeah, this is you know our starting point. Uh, we started the, the memory memory leak. Um, nothing really changed. And um, this is the RPS and resource pressure graph. Um, and if you remember the previous uh, you know try without protection, we saw the the green graphs going up, right? So that that was the main workloads memory and I/O pressure going up in tandem. Um, and and that crashed everything. Here, if you look at the two right, the the two graphs on the right side, um, green graph. There's some green dots at the bottom, meaning that um, you know the the workload pressure went up a little bit, but for the most part, uh, only the purple lines went up, right? Both memory and I/O. So only the um, the uh, the management part, right? The where the memory leak is happening, they are uh, experiencing pressure. And main workload is isolated from it. And um, 
here too um like before right if you look look at the uh, looked at the uh, uh, memory utilization graph on the top right um purple was going up green was going down right here purple is staying you know still like i mean it, it's staying at the same higher level it's using most of the machine and purple is you know it, it took a little bit of memory but it, it cannot expand anymore um so that's memory uh, protection uh working um and then if you look at the sub utilization graph on on top left um because uh, the main workload didn't lose much memory the sub usage of the main workload doesn't really change much only the um the the management part the purple line is going up because you know it's still trying to expand with the memory leak and that's all getting kicked out to swap um so that's what's happening and um let's check out the um, io part and here what's different is that if if you uh, look at the top right graph um before the the purple lines so that's that's a uh, right bandwidth right bps to the to the ssd and before the purple line was dominating right and and it really overloaded the device it was doing like hundreds of megabytes per per second of writes um and, and eventually the device just you know couldn't couldn't handle that with reasonable latency here if you look at the graph scale um, which might not be visible we are now staying at maybe 780 um, added up maybe under probably but definitely under 100 uh, mega bps in terms of writes and and the the purple lines the the system management part is being throttled so that you know it doesn't push the device beyond these limits the result of that is if you look at the bottom two graphs like the re both read and write latencies they are you know mostly staying under 10 milliseconds and and p50 is you know under a millisecond so um you know that that gives like ample time uh for the main workload to serve its traffic without violating its latency requirements so this is io controller uh working right i mean so io controller is making sure that the device is staying within its own limits and 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 that the the capacity the io capacity is being distributed according to you know their priorities right so and eventually right i mean uh after this happens for a while um, this is the the uh, log viewer part so umdi kicks in and and umdi you know kills the uh the memory leak and then you know everything is resolved right and and what would happen like if you know something like this uh, happens in the production what would happen is that um you know we will just have to debug it right I mean, this will get logged you know raise some alarm and we'll find out that you know, some management thing um triggered a bunch of um kills so we just debug it and and production workload wouldn't really get affected all that much so that's great um and so resource control so that's how um resource control demo demonstrates and explains so there's a lot of text explaining, you know, what goes into and why and how they work together and, and all that. Um, so, so protection is one of the scenarios that it explains. And there are like uh, uh, several uh, different sections um, to, to, to demo and, 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 and uh, different scenarios. And sideloading is another of them. Um, and it's because it's just kind of kind of cool. Um, so let's take a look. So um, the sideloading um, is that... Uh, so what is side loading? A lot of machines um, are not utilized fully, and then there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, scheduling inefficiencies, you know, stacking inefficiencies, um, which can be improved. But also there are things like um, what we call a, a disaster readiness buffer. Um, what they are is that you know, for example, if we lose a, a region, right, a data center, for you know, for an earthquake or whatever, right. If a data center goes down suddenly, we have to uh, other remaining data centers have to take over um, immediately, and and that has to happen like really quickly so that you know we don't our users you know don't experience any disruptions in service. So we we that's what digital readiness buffer is. So we run critical services with some headroom so that we can take over when some you know when some accidents happen. Means meaning that you know there are always some slack. Uh, in a lot of machines that we use so that's the R buffer um so because we have like this uh unused capacity it'd be nice if we can use you know something productive you know video encoding um you know uh, a lot of ai training or whatever right i mean if we can use this um uh, capacity 
for this, you know, uh, uh, batch opportunity workload, it'd be really great. Right? It'd be a lot more efficient. So that's the idea of a silo thing. You know, can we use the, the unused capacity for something else? Oh, let's not go there yet. Um, one thing is that, like, if you think about the you know previous the protection scenario, um, that was you know a form of side loading, right? I mean, we had main workload, and we had um, we had the memory leak, which is the you know secondary workload, let's call it secondary workload, and and the protection did pretty well, right? I mean, it, it protected um, the main workload from the secondary workload, so maybe that's enough, right? That that would be you know uh, the first thought um, which would occur. Um, and that's what we, we tried too, right? I mean, maybe that will just work. Um, and and so that's what you did. Um, so if you navigate to um, the uh, uh, side loading section of um, um, resource control demo, there's a, the, in the introduction part, there's a section called a naive approach. So it's emulating that exact scenario. It's trying to run side load just with, uh, you know, protection settings. And um, if you look at uh, the left graph, um, it's showing again RPS and, and latency, and and it's not running at full load like before. Uh, so before you know things happen to the graph, what it was doing is that uh, the the web server or you know RDHD in this case was running at about sixty percent um, load level, which is you know not too unusual um, for for a lot of services that we use, um, and. Then, you know, in the middle of the graph, I uh, started a, a Linux build job, right? I mean, so it's just build, it's untarling and, and building Linux kernel with fairly high uh, concurrency. And after a bit, you know, it starts compiling, so it's trying to occupy all the CPUs. And what happens is, while our RPS stays, you know, about at 60%, so green line doesn't deviate from the middle much, um, our blue line goes up, right? So what's happening here is that when the machine is not fully utilized, we have uh, uh, we earn a lot of credit in terms of latency, right? At, at full load, it was 100 milliseconds. Without at 60%, we can serve our clients at 40 milliseconds, which is great. But now we try to utilize what's remaining of the machine, and now we are now we are pushing up the latency, you know, to 70, you know, 80 milliseconds, which is not great. We don't want to take that hit just to utilize, you know, that that remaining capacity. Um, it's, it's, it's the you know it's 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 a, a, a difficult pill to swallow uh, when it's impacting user experience. Um, and uh, this is the uh, RPS and PSI graph um, that I'm not going to go into right now, um, be just because of time. And um, yeah, um, so what, why is latency deteriorating? Right, I mean even with all the um, or the um, resource protection, why is it deteriorating? Um, one thing is that we like to think that you know CPU is infinitely divisible, right? I mean, like just absolutely, you know, conceptually thinking, it's nice to think that you know you get twenty percent of CPU, you get eighty percent of CPU. But like, the thing is, I mean, we are scheduling you know uh, these discrete time blocks, right? So as you saturate the CPU more and more, there are like scheduling artifacts, right? You cannot. You you generally don't want to schedule like switch context or every time you want. So there there are these uh, artifacts and there's also inefficiencies in load balancing, right? I mean picking the idle the idlest core in the system is sometimes not trivial. Um, so there are those artifacts, and even more fundamental than that, um, CPUs we measure CPU utilization um, with work clock time, right? I mean when we say we are seventy percent utilizing the CPU, we are saying that the CPU is busy 70% of time, real time, right, work clock time. But I mean, that doesn't really mean that we are using 70% resources on the CPU, right? Uh, the CPU has a lot of shared resources, you know, cache, uh, memory bus, uh, TLB entries, whatnot, right? ALUs, right? They're all dynamically allocated as code execute on the CPUs. And as you use CPU, you know, more and more, you get closer to content, uh, Full saturation, all of those you know resources get contended for, and and as a result, CPU just executes slower. Given the same amount of time, um, the the number of instructions it can execute goes down as you you know saturate the CPU more and more. Um, basically, you know its time kind of dilates because it gets too busy. 
So that's, you know, so those two are why those um, latency spikes are happening. And, and the way that uh, we solved it is uh, using something called side loader. And what it does is that it guarantees that uh, CPU always have a certain amount of headroom um, that, um, that's not used um, to make sure that those latency um, artifacts don't happen. And um, this is the same thing, right? Um, it's the same scenario run with um, with um, side load under the side loader with the supervision of side loader. And and if you look at the you know green and blue line, they are at different positions just because of the the graph scaling um, changed. But you know they're just staying the flat, right? I mean they're they're not really changing much. So that's what you want to see. And if you look at the utilization graph here, um, what's cool is um, um, if you look at the CPU sum pressure, so top uh, bottom left graph, that's in how much CPU contention um, you know different parts of system are, are experiencing. So the green line is for the main workload, right? So and the blue line is for for the um, uh, for our compile job. And so green line uh, came up a little bit, but not by much. And all the you know uh, uh, weight is you know uh, all the pressure contention is experienced by the uh, secondary workload, which is the compile job. And if you look at top top left graph, right? Um, if you look at the the blue one, and that's the latency. So latency goes up a little bit, and that's something we can we can modulate by changing how much headroom we leave. Um, but you know that's that's completely fine. There's something we are willing to take if we can use you know thirty percent more of the machine. And uh, this is the utilization part. Um, one thing which is kind of interesting is that if you look at top uh, bottom left graph, there's a CPU utilization, right? So green is how much the main workload is using, blue is how much the compile job is using. Um, and, and in the middle, right, the blue comes up. That's you know the compiling phase of the Linux build job starting and it consuming CPUs. And you know, if you add the two up. Uh, you know, it's registering 70 to 80% of CPU utilization, which is fairly close to full um, saturation um, because, you know, on the top end, it doesn't really improve that much in terms of bandwidth. Um, but one thing which is really interesting is that the green graph goes up too. Um, this is interesting just because um, the, the, the RDHD, the, the main workload, is doing exactly the same amount of work as before, right? I mean, the the compile job starting didn't affect how many how many RPS the uh, the RDHD is serving. So it's exact, doing exactly the same amount of work the whole time. But when the compile job starts, uh, the main workload CPU utilization goes up a little bit too. So that's showing that you know CPU actually became slower. So it's taking more time doing the same amount of work. Um, so yeah, that's you know that's part of the reason why you also see the slight increase in in latency. All right, so research control demo is under active development. And um, the two things uh, which are kind of noteworthy is that one thing is that um, currently, like at the public version uh, right now, released version, um, has uh, its own its parameters tuned in a way to maximize the differences in, in, in resource uh, consumption. But uh, the, the newer version um, will have its behaviors uh, kind of synced or, or brought closer to uh, one of our production workloads, which is really popular or, or really widespread and, and, and used as benchmark, so that it has it would have like a lot of uh, resemblance to to actual production workload in terms of uh, resource behavior or like how it responds to you know lack of certain resources. And another thing is that uh, something called resource control bench. And resource control demo is you know interactive dem demo explaining everything and you can play with it to you know to see how things behave. Resource control bench is like uh, this Kent uh, benchmarks um, to to determine like IO cost, IO controller parameters, or evaluate how well things are isolated or how well you know uh, work the total work is being conserved. So it can be used for you know evaluating and verifying different um, resource control setups and kernel features and kernel development. Um, so that's what's happening. And if you want to try it out, um, it's a little bit involved to try. Um, right now, the easiest way is either trying it on AWS or installing uh, on, on a you know dedicated uh, SSD, um, just because you know it needs you know FS and, and all those things. Um, so if you visit this website, 
um, you know, there's an instruction on, on how to start it and how to install it and how to get started with it. Um, and then we are working to make it, you know, more, more accessible and it will become more accessible as a lot of these features are, are already or, or in upstream, but it's also getting adopted um, through the, you know, upstream uh, systemd and then and Fedora and then different distros. So um, that's my presentation. Thank you very much. And, and we have about three minutes left. So if we can have um, Q&A, if anybody has questions. Yes, we've got a few minutes for questions. Um, if you've got a question, please post it in the Tux Theatre chat, prefixed with question, um, and we will uh, answer them as we see them. And I see a link to the uh, Facebook microsite um, the yes. URL on the last slide has now been posted in the chat for anyone yes. who wishes to look at that. So no questions. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, TJ.